What's your name? I saw you just the other day. The, the genesis of this album was basically the personal circumstances that I'd been through during the COVID lockdowns. I got a call from my brother saying, oh, mum's taking a turn for the worst, she's really ill. All the borders were closed between the states and, and, yeah, and the borders between the countries were closed. So I basically had to, yeah, say goodbye to my mum on a phone. I'm the youngest of three and I had to be the one that said, mum, it's all cool, you don't have to worry about us anymore, you know, you've done a great job, you can let go, we're gonna be fine. So that was pretty tough to do on a phone, uh, uh, but I carried that, it was, you know, did it, and she, she actually did relax, and then the next day she passed away. This was, the actual catalyst for me finally getting around to writing a solo record was the fact that I went and played a show down south, I think it was in Akaroa. Unbeknownst to me, there was a whole bunch of people with COVID there, and I caught it. And then two weeks after I, ha I, I caught it, I was woken up out of a dream uh, with like basically a car alarm going off in my head. Because I had pre-existing tinnitus, and so for people that don't know what that is, that's like ringing in your ears. If you had pre-existing tinnitus, you, there's a 40, 50% chance of it, uh, COVID coming in and turning it up. That's what happened to me. The first thing we need to do, because it's attention-based, is to try and get you to relax. How do we get you to relax? Well, unfortunately, with tinnitus, you can't meditate, because as soon as you're in a silent room, your brain's gonna go straight to that noise in your head. What's another mindfulness technique? Ah, oh, play your guitar, John. So that literally started. That's what started writing this record. I just went, basically, downstairs into the, into the studio, and just every day I picked up my guitar. And out of that, I think the first song I wrote was Love Is Forever, which is literally about losing mum, but then seeing my daughter, who was five at the time, running around like a lunatic in my house. And I've seen photos of mum when she's the same age. She's got the same legs, she's got the same eyes. There she is, in a, you know, in a weird way. It's that cycle of life thing. Forever. So anyway, I'm just working through that musically because music is the thing that's got me through my whole life. Like from when I was two, I used to watch my parents' Beatles Hard Day's Night record go around on their turntable and go, oh, it's alchemy, man, it's magic. Whoa, you just put that needle down on that bit of plastic and then it's coming out of the speakers. And it's like, I just wanted to know how they did that magic trick. Spent my whole life looking for it. I was making music that I needed to hear. Uh, that I needed to hear after what I'd been through. I needed to hear it. I needed music that held me, that said, there, John, there, there, Johnny, it's okay. Life is still beautiful, even though you're sad. Now I'm looking back. Yeah, so I go, I go for big, long walks, that, and that, that, I find that really beneficial to songwriting, because uh, I think about things a lot when I'm walking, and one day I got, yeah, literally lost in, the, in Wellington where I, where I grew up and I uh, ended up writing a song called Lost in My Hometown. Getting lost in my hometown but you were And then, you know, like, all of a sudden I had eight tunes and it was like, I mean, my kids are singing all the words and my, my wife knew all the words and I was like, I, I think I plucked up the courage one day to be able to go on there and play these songs for, um, the local Aotearoa crew at Warner's and I was pretty nervous about playing it because it's real personal stuff and uh, I, I think I played Last of the Lonely Gods, the title track. I was too embarrassed to even look at the, the people I was playing it to so I just like listened to it and then there wasn't any noise after it, the song had finished. I thought, oh man, I didn't like it but then I turned around and and uh, Lisa who, who's the head of Warner's, she's like tears streaming down her face and I was like, Oh, okay, you're right. So it actually affects people like it affects me. The last of the lonely gods, one by one, you will defeat them one by one. When things will start to turn around. As soon as they said, Do you want to work with the producer? I was like, Scott. He's produced Empire of the Sun, which I really like. 
Uh, he's also co-written with people like Daniel Johns for, from Silverchair. He co-wrote that song Straight Lines, which is my favorite Silverchair song. So I sent it to him, eight songs, really raw. He came back straight away and went, Johnny, you do realize that I'm exactly the same age as you, and I've got a six and a nine year old just like you, and I know exactly what you're saying. I'm totally in. Come over to my studio uh, in the Central Coast, New South Wales, a place called The Grove, beautiful studio. You can stay there. If you don't mind, uh, I've got a really um, talented young piano player that lives just down the road. I've got a friend that plays violin real good, and we've got this young drummer that I use called Harry Dave. Do you mind if we just have a play? And I was like, I will, I will. After every take of a piano or a violin or a or even a drum take, has it got the romance? Has it got the romance? You know, and it's all about the romance. And it was like, what is the romance? Romance is basically, does it make you feel like you're you're in a movie? Every day I was in that studio, I was like, I can't wait to watch what happens with this song, you know? And it was like that. And it, I was never disappointed. In fact, uh, my, all my expectations were exceeded every day when I was working with Scott. One of the predominant feelings I was left with when uh, Mum passed away was like this feeling of vertigo. Uh, this feeling of uh, me and then the universe, uh, and with no uh, with no barrier between me and the universe. On the day you died, I wondered if I could. I was terrified that it wouldn't do no good. Now all that's left is just me and my girl. I, I can't tell you how pleased I was with the sonic, overall sonics when I finally got the mixes back then, got the masters back from Sterling Sound in New York. It's like, that's one of the best sounding records I've ever done. All your sins that find you out And when you feel like you've been known. It's a time that people need to be as honest as possible at the moment, you know, and um, well, I, I know for me, that's what I need to hear, you know? I need to hear that, yeah. On the day